Well, as you can probably tell from the hum of the M25 behind me, we are at Farlow's Lake over in Slough. Now, this is somewhere I visit a lot uh, in my own fishing and as a coach as well. Uh, Farlow's in the winter. Well, just like anywhere, it can be a tricky place. But if you get your location right, you can have some absolutely fantastic sport down here. And I've had some mega, mega winters. Uh, not every trip you catch them. You know, I've been here years and you never get your head around the place. You know, you think you know where they are. You spend the night in there and you get it wrong. But um, there's always areas where I expect fish to be. Um, open water, there's a few swims in there, sort of pegs 41 to 44, peg two, Scots. You know, they're always in the hold fish in the winter. But um, I've picked an island swim. Um, they hold a lot of fish, you know, and you can get some mega results off the back of fishing islands and fishing close to the islands. And um, yeah, it's not happened yet. I'm feeling very confident. I've got two rods bang up tight to the islands, but not super tight like I would fish in the summer, you know, where you've got a foot of water. I've pushed about half a rod length off into sort of five, six, seven foot of water. We would expect the fish to be sort of roaming around looking for a, for a free bit of food. And I've not gone mad with the bait, you know, single solid bags, little traps, just trying to nick a bite and work it out from there. But yeah, nothing yet. The rods are out there, I'm fishing confident and that's the most important thing at this time of the year, you know, you're fishing behind confident rods, you're not just pub chucked them, sitting there, hoping they're going to go. I know if fish come round that island, I stand a very good chance at nicking a bite and at winter, that is what it's all about. Right, I'm going to quickly run you through how I like to fish solid bags. Now, it's probably a little bit different to maybe how you fished before with them or seen in magazines, but this is how I like to do it. First off, the lead system and hook bait choice. Very simple fishing, three ounce lead, very short hook link, size six hook and a very, very small hook bait. And the reason behind the hook bait choice, my loose feed. As you can tell here, is very small. You know, I've got two mil pellets, four mil pellets, and a couple of six mil pellets involved in there as well. And Tom have added a few other little sort of link powders and a few liquids. You know, there's a lot of attraction coming off that. But I don't want a massive sort of 14 or 16 mil hook bait proudly present on top of that. I want a nice small one. And that's where I use the sort of mainline match hook baits. They're eight mil and they blend into the solid bag absolutely perfect. And no alarm bells are gonna ring if a fish drifts over the top of it. It's gonna suck it up and away we go. So I've gone for very small. I also like to sort of give them an extra bit of boost, a little bait spray, a few squirts of that every now and then, shake them around, just to boost the attraction even more. Now moving on to the construction of the solid bag. Now I do it slightly different to sort of most people out there, I believe. Uh, I've not seen anyone else do it yet. So this is how I do it. Now I first start off with a small solid bag. That's all I really fish. There's enough food in that solid bag. I don't need a bigger one. So I start off with a small one open up my bag so I've got plenty of movement and room to play at about a third of the way up with your mix now a lot of people at this stage will just plop their hook bait in add a bit more pellet than the mix but my way of doing things is add my lead first but have it flat against one side add a little bit more mix Now my lead's this side, flat against the bag. I want my hook bait on the complete opposite side. So I carefully place the hook bait in the bag and gently find the nice little spot for it so my hook's not tangled round it at all and sitting proud. Add a little bit more of the mix just to cover up any hook link. So my hook bait's there now and my lead is just there. And then bring all the corners together. Just tap away. Just trying to get that bag nice and compact. So there's no, well, there will be air in it, but I'm trying to get as much air out as possible. Really compact that bag. And it's already solid. If it's all sort of floppy and not very solid at this stage, start again, you know. It's really important that it's rock hard. I've got all the air out of that now and move on to 
the PVA tape. Now I quickly go around sort of four or five times, melt that, and then two very simple overhand knots. One, two. Now at the minute, he's nice and tight, but he's not very aerodynamic. and He's not gonna fly well in flight. So I tuck my corners in. Give it a lick. Then that PVA now where it's been licked will stick to itself. Give that a couple of seconds to stick and then work on the other corner. Again, just let it get tacky. And fold him right over. And there we have a nice little bag. Tight him up a little bit. And then you're left with a bag that's going to give you perfect presentation every single time. That lead, gravity's got to kick in, no matter what happens, that lead will always land first, just like a flatbed feeder you see match anglers use, and my hook bait sitting proud, not too blatant for any carp to come along, and he's been in the back of my net. Now one last little really important factor to men mention is that it's still air in this solid bag. No matter how solid you're going to get them, they will still be trapped air. So it's really important where you place your hole. The lead is going to be flat on the bottom and I want my air hole to be right next to the hook bait. As that sinks onto the bottom, you'll see the, the air escaping out of that hole, my lead laying flat and me fishing effectively. Well, now we've got about 15 hours of darkness in front of us, I want to make sure these rods are absolutely bang on the money. And I mean, if it takes me three or four casts, so be it. But I want to know when I'm sitting there at midnight that my rods are as efficient as effectively as possible. So like I say, it doesn't matter if it takes as many casts, as long as I know when I go to bed, I am fishing, I'm happy. So last one to go, get this one bang on the money and get a brew on. Well, after a very slow night, to be fair, a very slow session, but don't you blame yourself on this one, and I think I got it completely wrong with the swim choice. And uh, it won't be the first time, and it won't be the last time either. That is all part of the winter fishing. You know, you're working off your gut a lot of the time. There's not a lot of fish showing. There's not a massive amount of fish coming out. So a lot of the time, you know, you've got to keep an eye on social media, try and work out what swimmers have been doing fish, speak to the bailiffs, speak to other anglers. I've done all that, but the swim I chose, I thought I had a very good chance, but the fish have had other ideas and that's all part of the fun. I fished well, I fished consistent. I'm now sitting here thinking these rods could go, but fish have got fins, they swim where they want, and that is all part of the fun. It doesn't put you off, you've got to keep coming, keep trying, and that's all part of it. So until next time, I hope you've learned a little bit of how I approach farlows and the solid bags and get them super tight, the small little hook baits, and if there were fish here, trust me, I'd have had a few. But that's all part of the fun. Hope you enjoyed it. See you soon. Bye.